two months after I entered Germany, uh, in the American occupation zone, um, they had a, a house near Luxembourg where they had some fairly high-ranking Germans in captivity, and one of them was Reichsmarschall Göring. I was given limited access to him to talk to him. I was told I must talk about anything political, but could talk about the Luftwaffe aspects. I found him, strangely enough, quite an interesting personality. I would say engaging personality, because unlike some of the higher Nazis, he did not pretend that he was doing everything under orders, and therefore the blame was not his. He was quite forthcoming in saying that he was responsible for his actions in almost every field that you uh, tackled him about, in aviation certainly. And um, he liked to talk, uh, obviously, to pilots. He, it, one of the problems of Goering was he was as much interested in interrogating me as I was in interrogating him. He wanted to know a lot about our feelings of how the Luftwaffe were doing, where they went wrong and when it started to, the cracks started to show from our point of view. So I found him very, very interesting from that aspect. What about Himmler? Yes, I had a very short interrogation of Himmler just before he committed suicide and he was the absolute opposite of Goering. He, he really had not much to say for himself and he always took refuge in the fact that he said he was acting entirely under orders from higher authority. I did ask him one, only one real question about aviation. I had heard that at one stage he had arrested, around about 1943 I think it was, he had arrested Werner von Braun who was their top rocket man. So I asked him why this took place. And he said that he thought von Braun um, had lost interest in helping the war effort, but was devoting too much time to his visions of space travel. And um, this was the reason he withdrew him from, if you like, the rocket scene of for a short time, I think it was only about three months. Now, you interrogated Heinkel. Would you like to say something about Heinkel? As Dr. Heinkel was an interesting little man, uh, he was quite frank that um, within the Nazi hierarchy, he lived a bit on a knife edge. He was of Jewish origin, which was not the best thing to be in that situation. And uh, he felt that his existence, or his continued existence, depended on him producing the goods for the Luftwaffe. I think this was a very fair assessment of his situation. But he certainly didn't give the impression of being highly nervous about it. He seemed to really be enjoying what he had to do as a designer. And of course, money was no object in those days. So it was a dream from a designer's point, that point of view anyway.